Stop! You like any dog, right? Definitely. You don't like these ones? No, these yes, ones are because pain, they huh? follow us every, anywhere we run. Give it, to, give it to the goat. Polar, what are you doing? I know! Hold on! I did it! You did it! We're not sure who alpha male is. They're kind of... Are kinda, they both boys? Yeah, they're kind of an even match. Get out of there! Have y'all gotten ticks? Oh yeah, they got tons. We gotta keep them on medicine. Ah. Oh. And it sucks because you don't want to give that stuff to your dogs, but there's not uh, much else you can do. I mean, it's that or they get Lyme disease from tons of ticks. I mean, we were pulling them off like three and four a day. The number one livestock that I would like to be protected is not animals, it's the kids. So, what are people saying in terms of on, on those forums of like that these are. That you've socialized them, you know, yeah. they're they're pets. There's a big, yeah, there's a, I would say there's I a big question from shirt. people. A lot of people that recommend like LGDs, Livestock Guardian yeah. Dogs, okay. would say, you know, put them out in the pasture from puppies, don't have any social activity with them, and they're going to bond with those animals, which is true, but we don't have 40 acres that we're yeah. just throwing sheep and goats or cattle out there. We have five acres with kids and a few chickens and a few goats. We thought the same thing when we first got um, Olaf, we set him out in that fenced area and we were like, don't pet him, don't play with him, like don't do anything with him. And then luckily we got on some of the forums and have friends that have Great Pyrenees and LGDs and they were like, that's silly, you're not on 40 acres and you need him to guard your children and be bonded to your family as much as you do your livestock and so, we switched that pretty quickly. When we got Polar Bear, he's a rescue. There was no unsocializing him. And we were a little bit worried. We were like, he's just going to be a pet. You know, like he's not going to guard our animals. But he is the first one. Like the other day, he was laying on the porch um, under the picnic table. The girls were painting Christmas ornaments. And he was under the picnic table. And the chickens made a little bit of noise. And he jumped up, bolted. And there was a, a hawk. I don't know if it was a hawk or a buzzard. What? sitting on the edge of the chicken fence and he went and just chased it off. But they say LGDs aren't that great for aerial predators, but mm -hmm. ours, ours chase. Mm -hmm. And now Olaf, the littler one, has just, you know, kind of learned from him. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, we, we decided we wanted them to take care of our kids as much as our pets. And since we're on such small property, they mostly perimeter guard. Like, you notice no, they don't just, just lay over inside. there with the chicken. We used to have a lot of coyotes. Like, coyotes were eating our, were taking our hens in broad daylight. And we were watching them do it. And we do notice the dogs will, you know, they'll parole the perimeter and they'll run the fence line and they bark and we haven't, we haven't lost a hen. We haven't lost anything since we got them. So, but I don't know, I like them as pets too. I can't recommend them enough. If I was going to get a pet on a homestead, I would get a Great Pyrenees. Or Olaf is an, is an Anatolian Pyrenees mix. The Anatolian Shepherd's a little bit shorter hair and you can see Olaf has those color a little bit yeah. brown on him. So they have like the brownish and kind of the curly tail. And they supposedly guard a little bit different. The, um, the Great Pyrenees bark all night long. They're just really loud. The Anatolians are not supposed to bark quite as much. They guard a little bit differently and they're a little bit shorter haired. Mm. So some people in Texas think that's better. I mean, we've been taught and learned that that double coat on the Great Pyrenees protects them in the heat during yeah. just as much, so never shave them or anything. And our, I mean, he was fine all summer and he's mm -hmm. got the, you know, the long hair. He would dig a hole in the ground when he got cool, but I love them. Like, I, I would get Great Pyrenees for sure. I do think once you get your property and you get goats, you get chickens, whatever, if you want a dog, an outside like LGD style that's also kind of a pet, I just, you I love them. Oh love yeah. Them. They're amazing. But you have to get two. The important. Yeah. Yeah. I read from somebody, um, from a friend actually, that her LGD, her Great Pyrenees would climb six foot fences. Oh my. That dog kennel out there, we'll go show you the dog kennel at some point. That dog kennel that's out there in the chicken pen, at a storm one night, that dog climbed up the top oh. of the dog panel that is like six foot high and climbed out the Poor top guy. of it. Fractured his tooth in Poor the process. Guy. I had to take him to the vet. 
that chicken panel with hot wire okay, on it. He way. learned to clear it. It would shock him. Yeah. And then he'd jump back down and then he'd just test it enough times to figure out that it wasn't that bad and he would just jump over. Yeah. We could not keep that dog. That's polar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. We could not keep him yeah. in until we built that mm -hmm. bigger, taller, higher fence. So. so you used the landscape. We used the landscape timbers because it made it cheaper and then they're a lot cheaper. A I lot learned, cheaper. I learned that. Yeah. Did I tell you? Like 350 yeah. compared to eight. Yeah. I saw them yeah. out in front of Lowe's. So we did that, and then that part's not really finished, but when it's finished, I just use fence pickets instead of one by fours for the cross rails. They still give it some support and they still make it look pretty without spending a one by four is like eight bucks and a fence picket like a dollar fifty. So it's just a difference in price. So are those your predators up there? Sometimes, yeah. I can't tell if those are hawks or if they're the the uh, vultures. They might be vultures or they might just be hawks riding the wind. Well, I so, would think it either. Hey, you got a lot of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Holy cow. So none of the, I think we're kind of on the top of a hill. So yeah. the wind scoops up and it picks them up. But the dog's like, I'm surprised he's not going at them. The older dog is real good he about he sees something in the air and he's, he'll he's after it he'll wake up from a dead sleep to go chase whatever's in the wow. air wow so this is 600 feet so we have five acres it's almost a square so it's 600 feet in each direction so we had to fence 1800 feet which ended up costing about fourteen thousand dollars in material and a lot of labor. I would say combined it's probably 500 hours of labor um, to do all that and that's with the help of a tractor. So Jeez. Um, a lot of time, a lot of energy to build a perimeter fence. Now we'll see a back section. The back section was the quickest and it's mostly just T-posts and then this uh, this goat panel fencing. So that goes up pretty quick. You can do mm -hmm. about 100 foot in a day with that um, with just two guys. So yeah. That's much more cost effective. So we got a nice little lane that we'll try to keep clear here along the fence. And the dogs parole the perimeter on a regular basis, but I think it's more to uh, look for holes in places they can get out than it is to <laughs> guard my property. Yeah, the fence goes down, depending on where it's at, like the ground dips right there. Yeah. So you can see the bottom, but other places it's buried, you know, two inches. So how'd you dig that two down? Inches. Just with the shovel. Okay. Yeah, we just stuck the shovel in and broke it back. This is weld wire. This is just, I think this is three by one weld wire. Oh, okay. Um, I use, I've made some tomato cages out of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So this is probably um, the cheapest. The cheapest place is McCoy's that I've found. Okay. And you can get a hundred foot for about 89 bucks. Cheaper than Lowe's or so, Home Depot? Oh yeah, wow. for sure. Cool. So McCoy's, hundred foot, 89 bucks. I saw it online for about the same price. Um, so that's almost the cheapest fencing you can buy. You can get 330 foot of the what they call goat panel, um, which isn't as rigid on its own, um, and that's you can get for about 60 cents a foot. So it's a little bit cheaper, but I like this because it's rigid and stands up on its own, and the goat panel will fold and crumple kind of underneath its own weight. But it is thicker gauge, mm -hmm. so. I've already patched one hole like that, but I need to patch that one too. That's where the dogs are. They already found a hole. Yeah. Andrew, this is what we do. <laughs> Carrying around a 22 going through the bus. Ow! <laughs> the dog just took off running. He doesn't like it. Go ahead for fun. Did you hit it? Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> so that was the shortcut. How is the chick shawl yeah. doing for you? I should have followed Justin's instructions on the wheels. So other than the wheels, um, kind of getting a little cattywampus. Oh, so here, here. It's an like, awesome model. Wait, convenient for... And you can do that. that and then you can get inside and do whatever you need to do yeah that's to keep the goats out the goats were crawling in and eating the chicken food <laughs>